And we're going to begin tonight with an inspiring story of personal courage and medical triumph. You are about to meet a woman who, as a teenager, had her face blown apart by an accidental shotgun blast. It was a miracle that she even survived, but now, more than a decade later, with a family of her own, she's undergone a remarkable procedure that has once again altered her life, this time for the better. Her journey is amazing, but we want you to know that some of the pictures you are about to see are very disturbing. Ashley Banfield has the exclusive report. I had gorgeous blue eyes. I had a darker blonde hair, uh, had a nice tan. <laughs> Um, I've always had nice shaped eyebrows. I was very beautiful, uh, naturally beautiful. For the last 11 years, Chrissy Steltz has been living without a face. There's a gaping hole where her eyes, nose, and cheeks used to be. Alrighty. Uh -huh. Okay. But today, through the miracle of science and the kindness of doctors, she's about to get a brand new face, just like her pictures, only aged to reflect the decade that's passed. She was only 16 years old when it happened. She'd left home and was living with her boyfriend, but she still attended school every day, getting straight A's, until everything changed. Her friends robbed a country store and stole dozens of guns. Chrissy was in the getaway car. Then one night, when a group of teenagers were drinking at her apartment, someone started fooling around with a stolen shotgun. My words were put that down before you kill somebody, and he told me it's not loaded. The blast that followed took two-thirds of Chrissy's face with it. I don't know if you've ever seen like a wounded animal trying to get up. That's what I saw. I saw an injury that nobody survives, except somebody really strong, and she was trying to get up. Chrissy was rushed to the hospital, where one of the first people to see her was Dr. Eric Dirks, a maxillofacial surgeon who would remain in her life for the next decade. The blast itself removed the contents of her left eye socket, removed her nose and the supporting midfacial structures, and damaged her right eye to the extent that she lost vision. Have you ever seen anything like Chrissy Steltz's case. I've not seen anything quite so severe where the patient lived. In a coma and hospitalized for six weeks, Chrissy had no idea what had happened to her when she regained consciousness. And she wasn't ever going to see again or smell. And then her, she didn't have a nose. And she didn't have eyes. That they were gone. When I finally knew what had happened to me, that I had lost my sight and that it would never be coming back, I knew I could sit back and I could have a pity party or I could figure out what to do and go about doing it, and that's exactly what I did. And thus began Chrissy's 11-year odyssey. First, she'd have to go out in public, and an oversized sleep shade was her mask of choice. Have you ever felt people staring at you? Have you known that people are staring at you even mm -hmm. though you can't see them staring yeah, at you? I've, I've definitely known and uh, I've, like I said, I've never let it bother me. In fact, if I see, if I realize or am informed of someone staring, I'll wave often. And it embarrasses them once they realize that a blind person has somehow spotted them, you know. Next up, graduation from high school, still with straight A's. And then the high school prom. You suffered a gunshot wound to the face <laughs> at 16, and you graduated on time, straight A's. Yes. You realize this is completely <laughs> unheard of. <laughs> you know, it's part of who I am. After that, classes for the blind, where she'd meet Jeffrey Dilger, who was also blinded at 16. They fell in love and have been together ever since. <laughs> and 11 months ago, Jeffrey Jr. arrived a daunting new addition for two blind parents. Yeah. It's almost as though you don't even know you're blind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but most difficult of all, the year-long multi-surgery marathon to rebuild the bowl-shaped crater that had been left in her face, one of the most extensive prosthetic facial surgeries doctors have ever attempted. Damaged tissue had to be removed. A breathing passage had to be opened to her nasal cavity. Eight Dental implants were drilled into her facial bones with magnets affixed to the tips so that this prosthetic face could snap on and snap off. 
Year after year, Chrissy was refused insurance coverage. They called it an aesthetic procedure. They don't want to pay for prosthetics to them. Um, as long as you can still walk and breathe, you're fine. This is certainly not a, you know, a, a veneer on a, on a front tooth. It's just as much of a medical necessity to me as an artificial arm or a leg. Dr. Larry Over and Dr. David Trainer are maxillofacial prosthodontists who, like Dr. Dirks, are working for free. The steps to rebuild her face, complete with natural character and realistic eyes, is part science and part artistry. A plaster cast is made of Chrissy's face. Then silicone is poured into the mold to form the skin-toned facial features. It's baked to seal in texture and color, then painted to reflect the natural flaws of human skin. And then comes the makeup. We got you blushing beige or whatever it was. <laughs> there is eyeliner, eyeshadow, and mascara baked right into the mask. Chrissy's got this uh, favorite makeup of hers, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll put that on and seal it onto the process so she doesn't have to keep reapplying it. It's like the fake tattooing of makeup. Mm -hmm. Lashes are poked into the silicone with tweezers. The eye and the mouth are the only areas of the body that are shiny. Positioning the acrylic eyes is critical, since so much of what we feel about people comes from looking directly into their eyes. Getting the gaze, so when you look, the both eyes are looking the same way, and that little glint is in the same position. And finally, the moment she's been waiting for. Hey, let's put it on and make sure it fits. There we go. He's very modest. And the net effect of all this work might be best measured by the reaction from her family and friends, who've gathered to see her with a face for the first time in a decade. Miss America. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hi, Shy. And look, without the glasses. Oh, my goodness, that's great. Oh, my God. Thank you. From her mother, tears of joy. She looks beautiful. And her doctors, deep gratification. What were your first thoughts for her when you saw the completed product on her face? It was like, she's whole again. Do you feel that? Mm -hmm. While everyone in the room sees Chrissy in a whole new way, Chrissy still can't see a thing. But that's not the point. She says this isn't just for her. It's for her little boy, Jeffrey. Yummy. Who's only ever known his mommy in a big black mask. I feel like I'm living for him more in a, a regular world where he can look at mom and see she looks as regular as everybody else. But first, the sleep mask goes back on. She wants to reveal the new look slowly, worried it might scare him. Junior. He's looking at us. Hi. Hi, Pink. Uh -huh. Did he look that time? Mm -hmm. But apart from a smile, Jeffrey seems to barely notice. For him, it turns out, nothing has changed. He's not minding it one bit. What do you think Jeffrey sees when he sees you now? I think he sees his mother. He sees that mom doesn't need the mask anymore. And perhaps that is the back. reason for this. Knowing what you have now, if you could do it all over again, would you change anything? Uh, you know, I wouldn't think so. I mean, I, I feel blessed, and if, if I were to change any one thing, I'd be afraid it would change everything. Now, as Chrissy goes about her everyday life, like taking her little sister to the mall, she no longer feels the stares of strangers. Chrissy, what is it that you want most now of everything? To be looked at as a plain Jane, like everyone else. To be treated just like everyone else. For Nightline, this is Ashley Banfield in Portland, Oregon.